This special podcast today is one where we both like to express Merry Merry Christmas Christmas to each and every one of you. We pray that you are being absolutely blessed and that this day, whether you're by yourself or whether you're with a multitude of family or whether it's just you and a couple others, but our expression is to you that this is the season to remember that it's all about Jesus. We're going to start with the Christmas story, and then I'm going to share what Christmas means to me, and then Betsy is going to share what Christmas means to her. And we pray and hope that it blesses you as it has blessed us throughout our many years of serving Jesus. Luke 2, starting with verse 1. And it came to pass in those days that a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. This census first took place while Quirinius was governing Syria. So all went to be registered, everyone to his own city. Joseph also went up from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth into Judea to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be registered with Mary, his betrothed wife, who was with child. So it was that while they were there, the days were completed for her to be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. Now there were in the same country shepherds living out in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. And behold, an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone round them. And they were greatly afraid. Then the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which will be to all people. For there is born to you this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign to you. You will find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. So it was when the angels had gone away from them into heaven that the shepherds said one to another, Let us now go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has come to pass, which the Lord has made known to us. And they came with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. Now when they had seen him, they made widely known the saying which was told them concerning this child. And all those who heard it marveled at those things which were told them by the shepherds. But Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. Then the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God, for all the things that they had heard and seen as it was told them. If you've been listening to our podcast, you know that a lot of it is us sharing how we have been able to experience and witness God's majesty in our own life. My testimony for you today is very, very simple. I was the son of a preacher boy actually a little hardened because of it because anyone who has been a child of a preacher knows that many times the preachers get used and abused and the last thing in the world that I wanted to do or to have happened to me was to be used and abused as I had seen had happened to my dad but God had a plan on my life And as a young boy, I knew it. But I did everything I could in my early 20s to try to forego that thought and try to convince God that maybe I had something better in plan for him than what he had. 
obviously, you know, that didn't work. Because here I am, so many, many years later, still preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. Why? Because he came to me in such a way that I could not deny him. When you understand the baptism of the Holy Spirit, it changes your life forever. And mind you, I'm not talking about some Pentecostal tongue thing. I'm talking about a relationship with the Holy Spirit. And loved ones, I don't care if you're evangelical, I don't care if you're Baptist, Methodist, Presbyterian, what you are. Pentecostal. I know many Pentecostals that don't have a clue what the baptism of the Holy Spirit is. They think, well, gee, I talk in tongues and that's it. No, my loved ones, that's not it. It's preaching the gospel. And that doesn't mean that you've got to be a preacher like God has put me on a path to be. What it means is that you have to surrender yourself to him for whatever his purpose is in your life. Maybe it's to be a mother. Maybe it's to be a wife. Maybe it's to be a teacher. Maybe it's to be a general contractor. Maybe it's to be a businessman. Maybe it's to be a store manager. But are you showing your whole self as a witness and a testimony that you are a creation of Jesus Christ? With the Holy Spirit, you can do that. And that's what the scripture means when it said in Acts that he would come on to them and that he would give them his spirit, that through his spirit, you can glorify the Father. That is what the true preaching of the gospel is all about. At the end of the podcast, we're going to do an old song that you all know. Go tell it on the mountain. And my question for you today is, are you telling it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is your King and your Lord and your Savior through your actions, through your deeds, and through what you're saying? I pray that is the desire. And that is my testimony for you today. And Betsy? I want to start out by saying I was the daughter of a preacher. And when I met my husband, who I thought was going to be a lawyer, lawyer, (laughs) I was thrilled to the core of my being because at that time I was like a lot of young people, materialistic, and that sounded like a wonderful profession to me. Honestly, things turned out different, and yes. we here we are in the ministry many, many, many years later. Well, I want to tell you about a special Christmas. It was December of 1980, and it was the day before, uh, a week before, the actual Christmas. It was a week before, really, Christmas Eve. And all my life, even though I loved Jesus, I really did. They told me I accepted him when I was a little child. But I was so little, you know, that I I had doubts in my heart about whether I was truly saved and whether I was going to be going to heaven for sure. And even though I did my best to follow Jesus and uh, talked, you know, talked about how I loved him, and I did, uh, I just was plagued by the thought, what if I wasn't really, really saved? Because uh, I used to be jealous of the people that were like alcoholics and stuff, and they had this dramatic experience. Well, turned out that December I had a dramatic experience. So I finally came to the place where, even though I loved Jesus, I just had to know for sure. And so on one night, we went to church, and uh, the pastor called me forward and said, 
come here, my sister, I want to pray for you. Now, it wasn't like most churches where you might know the pastor really well. He didn't know me from anything because it was a church of 700 people. And so he said, don't be afraid. Of course I was, but I went anyway. And he said, fear has dominated your life. Now, he didn't know me, so that must have been the Holy Spirit. And so uh, he prayed for me, and uh, I went over in the Spirit, much like the uh, guards did in, in the garden. And from then on, I was assured of my salvation, and I didn't doubt it. Still, I'm not perfect, but it was a turning point in my life. Uh, I think there are many people in church. I remember uh, being in a church where it seemed like a lot of people that were, I, I think, probably already saved, you know, got saved because I think they didn't have the assurance either. And if you don't have it, if you will just call out to Jesus, I don't know what kind of an experience he will give to you, but he will do something to let you know mm -hmm. that you truly belong to him. And I started writing songs, and about 63 songs later, well, a few more, but we've recorded 62, um, or 63. Here, here we are. Yeah. Ser serving the Lord and uh, not being afraid of not being saved anymore. You know, I don't even know if I'm going to get the words right. Here we, we are, are in, in your presence, presence lifting holy hands, hands to, to you. Jesus for the things he's brought us through. Here's the point. We're not perfect. We are just vessels of Jesus Christ, just like you are, my friend. And God wants to use you. That means all your good things, all your bad things, every note of your life, even if it's a little bit off. God can use it. How do I know? <laughs> because he's used it with me many, many times. He takes the foolish things to confound the wise. And boy, I'll tell you, I have confused more wise people in the world. And that's okay. Because I know who is leading me and who is leading my path. And Betsy knows who was leading her and leading her path. Our desire for you today besides it being Christmas Day, is that you just feel the arms of Jesus just wrapped around you. Maybe you're with a crowd. Maybe you're just with Jesus alone. But feel his arms wrapped around you as he says to you, my daughter, my son, Merry Christmas. I have come to be your Savior. God bless you. And I think of a verse, Jeremiah 33, 3, Call unto me, and I will answer thee, and show thee great and mighty things, which thou knowest not. So both of us together say to you, Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas.
soul salvation that blessed Christmas morn.